Welcome to Demystifying Math. In this lesson, we're going to be using a logistic model to analyze a state's population. Logistic models are often used when a relationship has a threshold or a carrying capacity. Populations typically have a threshold because there is a limit to the natural resources and land. For this problem, we're going to be using the logistic model y equals a divided by 1 plus be to the negative cx. We're going to let x represent the number of years after the year 1900, and y will represent the population in millions. We will use population statistics for the state and a graphing calculator to obtain the logistic model. The table shows the population statistics from the year 1900 to the year 2010. In the year 1900, the state's population was 0.529 million, or 529,000 residents. In the year 1950, the population was 2.771 million, or 2,771,000. In the year 2010, the state had a population of 18,802,000. What we're going to do is enter that information in our graphing calculator. We're going to enter the years after 1900, so that would be our second column, and our state's population will be our y value. So in order to do this, we're going to use the stat key. So click on your stat key here, and under the stat key, we're going to choose Edit. And then in the L1, we're going to enter the number of years after 1900. So if you have data in L1 and you want to clear it out, it's pretty easy to do. Um, just use your up arrow key to highlight L1, and then use clear and enter, and it will clear out anything that you have in that column. And you can do the same thing for all the other columns if you need to, but we're only going to be using L1 and L2, so you need to make sure they're cleared out first. Now, once you have in, cleared out your column, you want to start entering your data. So we're going to start with zero for the year 1900. And then every time you enter a piece of data, hit the Enter key. So we're going to enter 10 for the year 1910. And continue doing that until you get to the year 2010, which your last entry will be 110. And um, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video so I can finish entering the data. And you can do the same thing. Pause your video, finish entering the data, and then come back. Okay, so I um, finished entering all of the um, years. So I stopped at 110, um, which meant that I have 12 entries in total. Now we're going to go over to L2 and enter the population. So I'm just going to use my arrow key here to go over to the next column, and it should bring you right to the top of that column. And we're going to start entering the population in millions. So for um, 1900 you have 0.529, for 1910 you have 0.753, and then you can do the same thing we did for L1. Go ahead and pause the video and come back when you're done you can, um, and we'll calculate the logistic equation. Okay, so I finished entering the data in L1 and L2, and next step is going to be to calculate the logistic equation. So we're going to go back to our stat key, and this time we're going to use the calculate tool. So move over one by using your arrow key. And then we want a logistic equation, so we're going to scroll down till we see the word logistic. And there it is under B, so we're going to hit enter. Now in the X list, that's going to be our L1. So um, if you don't have an L1 there, it's pretty easy. Just go to second and one, that's going to give you L1. And L2 is right above 2, so second, 2. And then we're going to leave the frequency list empty, the regression equation storage. We're going to leave that empty as well because we're going to estimate this uh, equation just to make it a little easier to work with. Um, but you could put it in your y equals if you want to. Then we're going to go here and calculate. So while it's uh, on calculate, we're going to hit enter. Now it will take a minute or two to calculate this logistic equation, and you can kind of see that your calculator is working. It usually shows a little bar here showing that it's um, thinking. 
So give it a few minutes and it'll come up, and there it is. So um, for this particular equation, C is your numerator, A is the coefficient of E, and B is the coefficient of X. So we have that. And we're going to estimate it so that um, we can use it in our equation a little bit. So that's our next step. Okay, so um, putting it together, we have 26.35 for our numerator, 84.25 for our coefficient of E, and about 0.049 for our coefficient of X. And that was a negative B, so there's a negative in front there. So now what we want to do is work with our equation, and um, we're going to also graph it on our graphing calculator. So we're going to go to Y equals, and we're going to type in this equation. So it's 26.35 divided by, and I'm going to put parentheses around my denominator because it's a sum, 1 plus 84.25, and then E, which is right above LN, to the negative 0 0.04. 9 and then use your X key and then you can close your parentheses and we should be able to graph that now when you go to graph it um, it's probably not going to look too nice so we're going to change the window first so click on your window key and this is the window that I entered so that I can see um, the majority of the graph over the year span that I have so remember, um, we went up to 110 years for X. So I went a little bit beyond that because I want to see what happens um, you know, to the graph a number of years later on. So I put up to 300 years after 1900. And I just did a scale of 10 so it didn't make quite so many tick marks. And then for the Y maximum, I, I went to 30. And we'll see why we need that in a few minutes. And then once you enter these under your window key, you should be able to graph it. Okay, so we're going to graph it. And this is the picture of our logistic graph. So you can start to look at it that way. And we also want to plot the points that we had in L1 and L2. So that's our next step. We're going to go to um, stat plot, which is above y equals. So second y equals. And we want to turn our plots on. So I'm going to choose number one. And I'm going to click for on. And I want the first graph here. So it just gives me the dots. And in my X list, I want the L1. And the Y list, I want the L2. So again, just like we did before, second one for L1 and second two for L2. And then I use these little square marks, but you can use any mark that you want there. Now once you have that, you can just go back to graph and you should see your plotted points as well as your curve. So you can see how well it fits the points that we plotted. So you can start to see that it's increasing, the population is increasing here and here. And it's still increasing all the way along here. We'll talk about that as well. But you also see that it kind of tapers off here, like it's hardly increasing. It's almost a flat line here. And we want to look at that because that's actually um, based on this information that we have, um, the highest maximum population for this state. When it reaches that point where um, the population is using up all the natural resources and land space. So the next thing that we want to do is figure out um, what is this maximum population that the state can hold. So um, what we're going to do is analyze the graph for large values of um, x. In other words, a few years beyond where we are right now. So um, we're going to go in here, a second table set. And we're going to um, ask under the independent variable. This way, when we go to our table function, we can input what years we're interested in. So we're going to highlight the word ask. Again, that was going to second and window to get table set. And then we're going to go to our table. So that's second and graph. Now you see the X is empty. So we can enter any number of years that we want. All right, so that's our next step. 
So I want to analyze the graph um, at 150 years after 1900. So I'm going to put in 150 and hit enter. And it gives me out this number 24.997. So that's 24,997,000 residents in the year. That's 150 years after 1900. So that would be the year 2050. And then you're going to do the same thing for 175. And you get out these numbers. So that's where I get these numbers from. These are estimates for future populations of this particular state. So it looks like these numbers are approaching a specific number. It looks like it's closing in on 26.35. So 26.35 is our numerator. That's kind of the number that this whole graph is approaching as x goes to infinity. So let's go back and look at our graph. So if we put in y equals, let's go to the second one and put in 26.35. So that give us a horizontal line at 26.35. And go and graph it again, you can see that that is that maximum point there. That's our threshold amount for this particular state. All right, so our maximum population that this state can, can, can sustain is 26.35 million residents and that gives us a horizontal asymptote for our graph at 26.35 million. Alright, so this graph is always increasing and um, the population then will continue to increase. But what you should notice is that as you move away from like the year 1990, here is 1990, your um, population is still increasing but it's slowing down quite a bit as you move this way. So what we want to do is look at the slope between any pairs of points on our graph to see if the slope is decreasing. It's getting less and less of a slope. Okay, so that's going to be our next step here. Okay, so what we want to do for each one of these um, sets of ordered pairs we're going to find the slope between them. So between 1910 and 1900, we want to find the slope. So it's going to be our population is our y value, and our years is um, our x value. So you have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we're just taking the 0.753 minus the 0.529 and dividing it by 10 minus 0. And I got 0 0.0224 as my slope. So that gives me the average change in population per year between 1910 and 1900 in millions. So um, you have to think about that as multiplying it by a million. So that would be 0 0.224, 0 0.0224 times a million, or 22,400 increase in population per year between 1910 and 1900. Now you can figure out um, your slope for each and every set of ordered pairs, which I did for you here. So you can see um, um, what your increase is for each one. And they're all positive because your slope is always positive for all these. So it looks like um, they're pretty close to the same between 1910 and 1920. And then it popped up a little bit for 1930. Um, about the same for 1940, and then popped up again at 1950, popped up again in 1960, a little down in 1970, back up in 1980, and again increasing in 1990, and then starting to go down between 1990 and 2000, and down again in 2010. So it looks like it's starting to taper off as far as the increase in population goes. So what you should notice is that after we had a period of rapid growth in here, we're now experiencing a period of slower growth here. It's still growing, but slower. And it is expected to continue to slow as it approaches the maximum sustainable population for the state. And it looks like by the time you've reached 200 years after 1900 or the year 2100, um, your population will be maxed out and it should not continue to grow after that point. 
Okay, so thank you for tuning in to Demystifying Math.